I am here with Disney legend and Walt Disney Imagineering advisor, Tony Baxter, who has agreed to share with us a little bit more about his Disneyland ticket collection. It's a quite impressive one. Thank you so much for taking some time to walk us through well, this. The best part of it is getting to share it with people. So this I'm is so excited. For me too. Great. Yeah. Well, let's dive in. Well, let's start with opening day. You know, on opening day, there were three sets of tickets that were given out that I know of. There were green tickets, there were silver tickets, and there were gold tickets. And you've often heard a lot of stories about counterfeiting. Well, you didn't have to because if you look on this gold ticket, it says you can invite yourself and you write your name in and then put the number that came with you. In this case, Bill Treadwell came with 69 close friends. Close friends, <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of us got silver passes if you were there and then if you, you know, were lesser known to all, you got a green pass that came in after his uh, two hour show on TV was over with. But I find this one the most interesting, this little slip of mimeograph paper was given to all the children who were in the you know parade that ran into Fantasyland when it opened. So I'm sure very few of those were kept, whereas yeah. this looks really fancy and so forth. And then there were ticket books after that, Yeah, correct? yeah. The big thing that Disneyland was known about in the early days was the ticket books. And they began with A, B, and C, and uh, it wasn't until later that we got the E tickets. The coupons were called rides then. And Walt didn't like the word ride because it seemed like a carnival, so he switched it to coupons. Mm. And it stayed that way uh, all the way till the demise of tickets back in 81. The next year, it was kind of funny, if you were a, a kid whose parents were only had enough money to buy the 10 ride book, you got a little very thin book. And then if you had enough money to get a 15 ride book, it was a big fat much one. Much so, larger. Well, children didn't know much about economics. They knew that what kids at Disneyland had, you know, the best books because they were they called the Jumbo 15 ride. And it ends with D. It and ends then, with D. Yeah, uh, what must come next? Well, the next one was in 1959 when they opened um, the submarine ride and the Matterhorn. Those were in a whole new caliber. They were spectacular. It was the, the dawn of a new era. So uh, they coined the term e-ticket. What, what, it went down in a kind of a lexicon of American uh, idioms to say, wow, that is so great, it's an e-ticket. Uh, Sally Ride, I think, said that when she came back from her uh, space flight. Uh, so this was the beginning of the e-ticket in 1959. And the tickets went uh, on in various different iterations. They were produced by companies like, I think at the back of this, I have one by Frontier Trading Stamps, you know, I, who knows, I've never heard of that, or Sunkiss, which was a, a concession on Main Street. They had their own ticket book. And this went on to about 1981 when we went to Passports. But it's interesting because they lasted on in Tokyo until into 2001. These were fun. These were ticket books that didn't have admission to Disneyland. They were simply five tickets, and if you're really good at you know, selling your parents on buying more rides once you were in the park, you'd go back and get five additional rides. Uh, and they were mm. neat because they had beautiful graphics. You can see yeah. the Matterhorn um, and uh, yeah. get all the exciting things from 1959. Those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. So this is just one volume. I have like 10. Oh my goodness. I don't think we have the time to do this today. <laughs> well, what a treat it was just to yeah. get to see this. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing with us. Okay, fine. <laughs>